So very welcome back to our channel. As you can see on your screen, we have got this new circuit. It is basically a circuit of flip-flop. And this is, since this circuit has a memory, because there is this feedback, you also call it as a sequential circuit. Remember, there are two types of circuits in digital logic. One is sequential and one is a combinational. So combinational circuit doesn't have a memory. Sequential circuits does have a memory. And what is that memory? Because you see here, you have A and B to be inputs. You use two NAND gates that is one and two, and you have outputs, which is uh, complementary to each other, that is Q and Q bar. And the output of the first NAND gate becomes one of the input to the second NAND gate, and output of the second NAND gate becomes one of the input of the first NAND gate. So there is this feedback which gives this circuit an ability to store the past output. And based on that, then the next state of the uh, of the circuit is decided. So now our problem statement is for the circuit shown, the propagation delay of each NAND gate is one nanosecond. So let me write here. So this NAND gate has a propagation delay of one nanosecond. This NAND gate has a propagation of one nanosecond. Now what is the propagation delay? First, let us understand. Let us say you have A, B, up to n number of inputs to a logic element or logic gate here. So let's say this is your logic gate. Uh, for example, this is an OR logic and this is an output. So this logic gate has a PD that is a propagation delay in expressed in time in seconds. Uh, that indicates the time uh, time the logic will take to reflect the change in inputs to the change in output. So when there is a change in the inputs of the logic element, there'll be a change in the output accordingly. And the time it will take to reflect that change is indicated by propagation delay. Now, what causes a propagation delay? So there are several elements. For example, you have these uh, interconnections. Uh, for example, you have like another gate in, in next to this, for example, this is not logic. So these wires, which are also called as interconnects, they are one of the reason of causing the PD, that is propagation delay. Similarly, internals of these logic gates, you have transistors inside. So those transistors usually implemented using the CMOS technology. So that is your PMOS and this is your NMOS. Uh, uh, so those transistors have the parasitics associated with that. So those parasitics, for example, the capacitances and the resistances cause the delays. So internal of the transistor parameters and the other components also cause the propagation delay. Another is the load capacitance. For example, here you have this capacitance that is output load. So there is a charging and discharging of these capacitors. So it takes time to charge and discharge this capacitor right here. So that also contributes to propagation delay. And there is this capacitor also right over here because the input uh, capacitance of this NOT gate uh, becomes a load capacitance to this OR gate. So all these factors contribute to PD. As a designer of the digital logic, the aim of the designer is to reduce the PD as low as possible, okay, so that the uh, speed of the circuit can be improved. Uh, so what you do in the modern design, you use these transistors with the shortest channel length L, which is like nowadays you have one uh, 10 nanometer technology, you have like seven nanometer and even up to approaching the four nanometer channel. And it means the switching uh, of the charge carriers uh, in the transistor is as fast as possible. So it, it has to travel, the charge carriers travel the distance of just seven nanometer or four nanometer within a channel. So if you can see from the cross section, for example, this is N plus, N plus region, and this is the N MOS transistor. So you have oxide here, you have a poly metal, which is a gate terminal. This is your drain. This is your source. 
and this is your uh, substrate actually p type body so you have these charge carriers and this distance is 7 nanometer or which is a channel length it can be 10 nanometer 7 volts it is shrinking day by day so <clears throat> So with the understanding of propagation delay, uh, we read the problem and complete the problem statement. We have to find the critical path delay, which is in nanosecond. The gate uh, propagation delay also in nanosecond. Now we have to find the critical path delay. Now what is the critical path delay? So critical path delay, uh, I state like this. The critical path delay is the longest time for the input of the circuit to reach at the output. I repeat again, the critical path delay in a circuit in a digital logic is the longest path for an input to reach to the output. So in this circuit, which is under consideration, we can redraw the circuit to understand the longest path. And from that, we will see what is the value of magnitude of the critical path delay so you can see now this circuit i'm going to draw like this so here is my input a um, that that i will draw right here and this is my nand gate which is one of the uh, which has like uh, one nanosecond of propagation delay or rather i will uh, say this is nand gate one and this is one nanosecond pd and then I have another gate. This is like second gate, which has a one nanosecond delay. And this is an output. So this is basically Q, which becomes one of the input to the second NAND gate. This is input B. And here is the Q bar actually, and which is fed back as one of the input to the first NAND gate. So now the longest path for this uh, circuit input <clears throat> Uh, to reach the output right here, we can reflect. So here, from here to here, we see that it has to cross this delay of one nanosecond and it has to cross this delay of one nanosecond. So we will see that critical path delay, delay is equal to one nanosecond of plus one nanosecond, which is equal to two nanosecond. So you, it means you can apply the maximum clock frequency. Frequency will be one over the critical path delay. This is like critical path delay, which is about one over two nanoseconds. So it's like uh, uh, 500 megahertz. That's the maximum clock frequency you can have to this circuit. If you try to exceed this frequency, uh, range or uh, frequency value or magnitude, you will have your circuit malfunction. Okay, so that's the basic concept of your critical path delay calculation. So if I give you a circuit, let's say this is my circuit, let's say this is like and gate, um, this is right here, and then I have uh, like, let's say um, this is the circuit I'm drawing here. For example, and this is one. So A, B, and C, and uh, finally you have like uh, this is nine gate, and this is an output. And I say that okay, this has a one nanosecond of PD. This has like two nanosecond of PD. This has like five nanosecond of PD, and this has like one nanosecond of PD. PD is the propagation delay. Now calculate for this circuit the critical path delay in nanosecond. So find out the answer and write in the comment section what you think and share this video with others for a wider reach if you have liked this video and uh, till then still stay tuned for more engaging contents in the digital logic design. Till then wish you happy learning.